You got to get my attention before you ask me the question. I'm giving you a scenario here. Here's the deal. You know, give me something to work with. Don't just shoot questions at me. I can't do it. Talk to me like you're personal. That's what I like it. Ambitiously meet people and be hospitable. It's an honor for me to be here. interested in alternative solutions, whether it be in the medical field or in energy generation, because I've always questioned uh, the status quo and why we do things the way we are doing. Things never felt quite right, so I've always sought out a better way of doing things. And the free energy aspect is perfect because it can shape our world in a way where we can live in a free, sustainable society without worry of bills and without worry of carcinogens and all of that nonsense. And magnets have always interested me. And one day I was searching YouTube and different sites on the internet and I came upon a magnetic motor from a man named John Searle. And I started looking more into free energy from that point because this man's story was so unbelievable, I had to start looking into every free energy device and to see the validity and compare them all, to see what are the common factors of all of these free energy devices and if they're real or not. Changing the art of combusting to get energy and thus producing pollution to one as natural, the absorbing of natural energy Compressing it, using it, and then letting it go. It is a brand new type of technology. It's literally a magnetic motor. It's a linear motor operating on a magnetic bearing. Which means it has no friction. The magnets levitate as they orbit the stator. There is no wear, no tear. There is no heat, no vibration no emissions, and it's all beneficial. So it will draw in electrons, it will pull more and more in than you're taking out. So the device will get colder and colder.
because the electrons are getting more compact. They have got li they got far less room to move. It is so cold that the material will change its state. Just a very new concept in magnetism when you have an isolated magnetic field. The Earth's field repels it, and the faster the magnet spin on this device, the less mm -hmm. it weighs. The device itself only weighs so much, so when the magnets spin, you are now achieving inverse weight or inverse gravity, at which point it will lift and lift higher and lift higher. So these things went into overload mode. Uh, the magnets were spinning so fast that he couldn't stop it, and before he learned how to control them, they shot through his roof or they shot into the sky. and. It was uh, it was a loss until he learned how to build them again and or learned how to control them rather. From 1946 was the first model that he made, and the last model that was in operation was in 1982. Uh, John Searle was running his home in the UK for 31 <laughs> years on his device, and Midland's electric board uh, wasn't too happy and. Uh, sort of took it out of his home, ripped it out of his wall, and uh, took it from him. And that was the last working model. The claim is that these things have been built previously, they've worked, they've been demonstrated, but today no working prototype exists, and in order to build a working prototype, some people want a half a million dollars. This is Amy, just one of an uncountable number of negatively charged electrons seeking a positive destination. She finds the positively charged neodymium core irresistible and enters the Searle converter device becoming part of an enormous reservoir of electrons. Inside the neodymium, Amy meets Neo, an electron from the neodymium core. These electrons are drawn to the powerful magnetic flux line penetrating the four layers in the Searle design. They join together, forming a boson pair, as they spin around the magnetic force, releasing them on their pathway to freedom. As they enter the gate layer, they are compressed, feeling pressure to exit the system. At the same time, they are pulled and accelerated by the magnetic layer. Their energy continues to increase, racing through the emitter layer, joining trillions of other boson pairs that form the eddy current on the surface of plate one. The boson pair is captured by the roller and blasted into the positively charged neodymium core of the second stage plate, repeating the activity into the third stage of the Searle device. With tremendous energy, Amy and Neo are hurled forcefully into standard coils, where they are collected in the same manner as any generator of electricity. Nothing is created or destroyed. The circuit is complete. As the rollers move, they provoke electrons to migrate through the four layers of the plate, from the neodymium core, through the gate layer, the magnetic layer, and the emitter or copper layer. This activity repeats through the rollers and the plates. Unlike conventional generators, the electrons will be moving at extremely high velocity. Conventional currents are slow currents, and they build up heat. The more current you draw, the more heat you get. This system is the opposite. The more current you draw, the colder it gets, for this reason. At the quantum level, the electrons are riding the magnetic field, not hitting the lattice of the atoms. The electrons find their path between atoms undisturbed, so they accelerate to higher and higher speeds.